Hello everyone, my name is Jasmine Landeka um, from Nairobi, Kenya, and I'll be presenting on The Curious Reader. Have you ever flipped through a book page after page wondering what's next? I know I have. So here's a background to my study. Sorry. Um, the, the world's global youth literacy rate has grown exponentially over the previous years. As of 2024, the world's global youth literacy rate is 92%. However, the number of youth who enjoy reading just for fun does not reflect this statistic. In 2023, only 43% of children and young adults reported enjoying to read. So this led me to ask myself a couple of questions. Why is curiosity important in learning? How can curiosity be utilized to enhance education? And what is the importance of sustained literacy engagement? To answer these questions, I conducted a review using relevant scholarly literature from Google Scholar JSTOR, uh, National Institute of Health, and Science Direct databases. So here's our big question. What is curiosity? Curiosity is the desire to know and learn something. It is an intrinsic motivational uh, force or drive towards motivational, oh sorry, towards information attainment. Um, curiosity can be compared to hunger or thirst in that it is a hunger for knowledge or a thirst for knowledge. And the same brain reward systems that reward us for eating when hungry or drinking when thirsty are the same brain reward systems that reward us for learning something new. Therefore, um, curiosity is an information-seeking behavior that stimulates the brain reward systems. I'd like to give an example of a um, hypothetical John. John is fascinated by cows. He really, really um, loves cows. And um, one time he asks himself, why do cows move? Um, so initially, maybe John thought that cows make random um, moo sounds um, just for the fun of it. However, a quick Google search tells him that cows moo to communicate their emotions, for example, hunger or contentment. John is surprised by this information and he feels happy about the new information that he has just learned. And so John writes down a couple of other questions that he would like to learn about and probably research later on. And so I'm going to use this example of John to define some terms. A prediction error is the difference between an expectation and reality. And so John probably expected that um, cows um, randomly move. However, the reality is that cows move to communicate their emotions. Um, on to our next term, the reward prediction error is a difference between an expected reward and the reward received. Probably John thought he was right. Maybe he thought um, or he expected that when he did his little Google search, he would find that cows do just randomly move about. However, he is surprised that cows move not randomly, but to communicate their emotions. And um, this information makes John surprised. And he um, is uh, eager to learn more about cows. And this surprise and pleasant feeling that John gets after learning new information can be attributed to dopamine, which is a neurotransmitter that creates a feeling of pleasure. And so how does curiosity enhance learning? Curiosity triggers a reward prediction error in the brain. And this error is really the difference between what we expect is the answer or expect um, is the norm to um, what is the actual um, result or actual information. 
And the gap between this these two is um, just a question away or a couple of questions away. So when new information is learned, the brain's reward system is triggered. Um, and just to um, explain that, um, the dopamine is released from the ventral segmental area, which is the area that I am hovering my pointer about towards uh, different parts of the brain, um, towards the frontal cortex, the nucleus accumbens, the stratum, and the substantia nigra. Um, of particular importance or emphasis for me today is the transmission of dopamine from the VTA to the nucleus accumbens via the mesolimbic pathway. Um, so back to John. John is excited to learn about cows. And every time he picks up a book about um, cows and learns something new, he uh, feels happy about the information he's learning. He is getting wiser. And so this um, a great feeling and um, very active um, participation in his research um, triggers activation in the nucleus accumbens, which is a structure in the brain associated with reward anticipation. Therefore, every time um, John expects to learn something new, the nucleus accumbens will reinforce the pleasure of learning something new with the information he is about to get. And so John is always going to want to learn about cows and always going to want to learn new information because it makes him happy. And the brain, or particularly the nucleus accumbens, reinforces that feeling. Um, in his brain. Um, another thing that is particularly important for learning is um, memory. Memory is positively or profoundly uh, impacted by curiosity. I like to think that curiosity and interest are more or less the same thing. You are likely to remember something you are interested about or curious about, um, as opposed to something you are not very, very interested about. And because you pay particular or detailed attention to the um, inf information of curiosity or target information of curiosity, you are more likely to remember that information. However, learning of any information in peak curiosity states is enhanced. And that doesn't particularly go to say, that particularly goes to say that um, any information that you learn when your brain is in peak curiosity states is highly likely to be remembered as opposed to um, some random information that you learned when your brain was not in a peak curiosity state. And so what is the link between curiosity and reading? Reading is also an information-seeking behavior. However, reading motivation may not always be intrinsic. And why I say this is because um, I may read a recipe um, just so that I could be able to bake a cake. And so my cake is the extrinsic or the target or the goal. It is an extrinsic um, goal or factor that has made me read. However, um, when accompanied by curiosity towards a target or in topic of interest, um, reading may become uh, an intrinsic habit or something we do for the joy of it, not driven particularly by grades, for instance, but something we do because we um, want to learn more and because we are intrinsically driven to um, accomplish. So here are some of the benefits of sustained literacy engagement. First of all, it promotes lifelong learning. So learning is not confined to the classroom and learning is not confined to a desk and a chair. Learning can take place in a hammock um, attached to a tree or in um, a library somewhere or in um, a field 
um, where you'd sit and read and enjoy learning because um, sustained literacy engagement allows us to interact with ideas and um, ideas and perspectives outside the confines of our curriculum. Um, additionally, Sustained literacy engagement enhances cognitive performance. Um, reading in itself is a high task, is a high task cognitive skill that um, makes use of visualization, decoding, interpretation, and comprehension. And so it's like exercising the brain. And as we exercise the brain by reading, we strengthen our neural networks and even form new neural networks that um, um, when we learn new information. Therefore, it is no surprise that um, sustained literacy engagement has been shown to buffer clinical manifestations of Alzheimer's disease. Um, cure our sustained literacy engagement also inspires innovation. So expo exposure to various ideas and perspectives can be a catalyst for innovation and creative thinking. A great example would be um, Igor Sikorsky, who is inspired to build, who as a child read um, Jules Vaughan's Robert the Conqueror, and Vaughan's describes a machine, a flying machine that flies vertically into the air um, called the albatross. And bringing this as a child, Sikorsky was um, inspired to um, create one of his own. And indeed he did. In 1939, um, Igor Sikorsky um, invented or built the first practical helicopter. And so really this just boils down to how sustained literacy engagement can inspire innovation and creative thinking. Um, even in even two futuristic inventions that we probably haven't seen before, but are described in fantastical uh, books. Um, so the relevance of reading and curiosity in education today is very profound because curiosity in inducing strategies can be used by educators to promote free inquiry in the classroom. What this means is that there is no right or wrong answer. What this means is that there is an array of possibilities and this ultimately makes learning an adventure and not a chore. Learning becomes um, an um, learning becomes um, an experiment. It becomes something we do because you want to try it out and not because you have to get it right. Additionally, additionally, curiosity can be leveraged to promote reading culture. Studies have shown that um, students tend to read more on topics they are interested about. Um, and so if educators um, introduce curiosity into the classroom and coin um, concepts in such intriguing um, ways that pique students' curiosity, the likelihood of students taking or adopting these concepts into their free time by reading into them and exploring them further is very, very high. The bottom line is that learning becomes more meaningful when initiated intrinsically, and intrinsic motivation to learn creates a meaningful educational experience. Thank you so much for listening to me. Stay curious and make learning an adventure.